Shalom, Rastafari. This is Wendem Rebbe Yadin. This is Ras Ayadonis Tafari of the Lion of the Tribe of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty, the LOJ Society. And we're going to continue for part two. We're speaking about the Canaanite origins of the white race. You know, speaking about the white Hamites. The white Hamites and the Canaanite origins of the white race, right? So in the first video, we had left off right around here. We were speaking about the Phoenician gods and, and the Canaanite gods and who are the Canaanites and how the Canaanites, the biblical Canaanites, are the origin of the white race. And we was healing up um, a YouTuber by the um, channel name of Phoenician uh, goddess, my right, Phoenician goddess. Back in, I think, 2010, um, there was a brief uh, communication. She had came across maybe some of the information um, upon our site, and she was very curious to know, well, how did we know that the Europeans or the so-called white people are Canaanites? Because this is knowledge that is, is known but is, is suppressed, Right, And it's interesting where we find and who we find bringing out the facts of that matter, such as Phoenician goddess at, at, at her particular channel. right? And we don't know if a channel is still up or still out there. You know, in fact, we were over here. Let's just go back up here to the top. Right? This is from our, um, we had saved the site from that particular time. So let's get to the top of her site right here. Well, this is, oh, let's just bring this up right here. So we have the Canaanites and Phoenicians, right? The Canaanites and Phoenicians, Phoenician goddess channel. This was saved, I think, 11 to 2010, November 2nd, 2010. So we went into some of our archives that we had saved and we had found the site because we've been thinking on this for a few weeks. You know, um, and uh, we wondered whether, you know, we could find that information, right? Now, here you can see Phoenician goddess. You can see one of the Phoenician, the coins that she's using right there. Her profile, that she's a worshiper of the god Baal, fire bun. You know what I mean? But that's also just good to know because that's who they worshipped, right? Now we get to know, well, this is the origin Right of the so-called white people to know who's who. Therefore, the biblical story then comes more into context. Right, and as we mentioned before, no doubt a lot of so-called atheists. Right now, the false god, right, or the counterfeit so-called uh, Jesus, you know, or the false Jesus, the, the what the world flesh, you know, and devil puts out. Because we know the true Yeshua Hamashiach as our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, or Jesus Christos. But let's go on, right? We digress right there. Just to show right here, she speaks about the, you know, white Lebanese, our descendants of the Canaanites, and are not related, this is what's key right here, she says this over here, are not related to Abraham, Noah, Ishmael, Haga, or the Arab Ishmaelites. So there's a lot of people who think that when they meet so-called Arab people, Right? We're looking at this part right here. When they meet Arabic people, or people who say they're Arabs, right? And might say they're Ishmaelites. They might even be Muslims or Mohammedans. Ones will say, oh, they are the people of the Bible. They're Arabs, and therefore they are the descendants of Ishmael. No, no, no. They were Arabs, right? The, the original Arab people were Ethiopian, or first as Ethiopian people, and therefore black people. All right, they were black people. So let's go on right here. So the Canaanites, she says, accurately, right, are the original Europeans. Yes, that is right. The Canaanites are the original Europeans. All right, so the, the true origin of European people is, is from the Canaanites. Also mixed in with the Canaanites is Esau, because Esau had two Canaanite wives, right? And Rebecca and and Jacob's father, Isaac, they sent Jacob, right, to marry non-Canaanites. But now a lot of things are very mixed up and everything. 
So this is why this information to know, well, who are we as the once lost, now found black and brown sheep of the house of Israel? Who are we as royal Judah, right, of the line of the tribe of Judah, of the royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews? And after that knowledge of self, to know, well, who's who, right, on the face of the planet Earth, right? What's the true origin of the so-called white people, right? What does it mean, right, that this curse was placed on Canaan, right? And then we can really start to untangle the web of lies, such as the curse of Ham, right? There was no such curse on Ham. There's no curse of Ham that is truly and accurately reported in the Bible, right? But this is what the racist, white supremacy, racism, the Anglo-Europeans, right? This is what they told themselves, right, to justify the enslavement of the Hebo, the Ebo, the Igbo, or the Hebrew people, right? Speaking about the black and brown and sheep of the house of Israel, which was brought to the Americas and the Caribbean nearly 400 plus years ago, all right? So the Canaanites, remember what it says? The iniquity of the Amorites in Genesis chapter 15. And that's who is not listed in her list. I was wondering, she had two... Um, Tribes, she said, quote, the 12 tribes, right? The 12 tribes of um, Canaan. Well, that's incorrect. That's incorrect, Phoenician, right? Phoenician goddess, you're, you're not right and exact there. But on many of the other tribes, she doesn't include the Amorites, right? She don't include the Amorites. She, she adds in some Canaanites. And then she puts uh, the Cadmonites with a C instead of a K, the Cadmonites. Well, the Cadmonites are not Canaanites, right? And the Canaanites were before Canaan. They were before the, um, the global, the, you know, the, the deluge, not the global fire button. There's no such thing as a globe, right? We burn Baal, right? There's no such thing about a ball bouncing in the... That's a whole other re related subject matter because that's, that's really the big lie. You know, and we also are addressing that big lie, you know, concerning the true shape of the earth, right? And the sun rise and the sun sets, right? The sun is not a ball spinning around and the earth is not a ball spinning around the sun, you know, it's, and it's not 93 million miles away. We've been lied to all of humanity. I mean, I think that's one of the big lies right there, right? But now, if we could fall for that, right? I mean, they could tell us we, we come from so-called monkeys. And a lot of people believe that as well, right? But that's all part of the God of this world, how the God of this world has blinded the minds of those who do not believe. Some don't have a love of the truth. They know this is the truth, but they will seek to suppress this truth. So even finding someone who's standing 180 degrees diametrically opposite Right to you, you know what I mean? It, it's almost like we know who we are, right? As the once lost, now found, black and brown sheep in the house of Israel, and then our the descendants of our ancient, um, we could say enemies, know who they are. But then you have a whole bunch of confused people, you know what I mean? You have a whole bunch of people who are confused, right? And it's like uh, Morpheus said. We have to actually get the quote from Morpheus where he says that. They are so helplessly um, kind of like uh, plugged in to the world flesh and devil system that they would even fight, you know, and die and, and, and really seek to defend, you know, to defend the lie, right? To defend the lie, right? Instead of the truth. They don't have a love of the truth. What, I, what, what did Morpheus say? And Morpheus, I think he, it was a whole lady in red scene. Right, it was that um, in the Matrix. Uh, let's see if we can find this right here. It was in the Matrix movie. It was a whole um, Matrix lady in red, Morpheus. Let's see if we can find the dialogue, because what he says, you know, what he says in that scene. I think here's a transcript of the Matrix right here from the Matrix Truth. Let's see if we can find that scene right here. Morpheus said that the matrix is a system. I remember the matrix means womb. Matrix is a womb. And who has a womb? A mother. 
What is Babylon? Babylon is a mother. Right? Babylon is the mother of harlots. Right? And it's called the abomination right, of the planet Earth. But Morpheus says that the matrix of the system, Neo, that system is our enemy. But when you're inside, you look around. What do you see? When you're in the Babylon, what do you see? You see businessmen, teachers, lawyers, carpenters, the very minds of the people we are trying to save. But until we do, these people are still a part of that system, right? Until we are able, right, to save them with the truth. And this is speaking to mainly our people, the once lost, now found black and brown sheep of the house of Israel, the children of Israel, the children of the Ethiopians. So you look around, what do you see, right? You see businessmen, teachers, lawyers, carpenters, the very minds of the people we are trying to save. But until we do, these people are still a part of that system and that makes them our enemy. They will hate us. They will hate us for the truth, for us telling the truth about who they are. They will hate us for telling the truth about who the other people are, who our enemy is, right? They will hate us because of the truth. They do not have a love of the truth, right? They take pleasure, right, in the wickedness of this particular system. Let's bring this over. I think we was keeping this here for a while just to show you this right here. This is very important, right? This is very important right there. Right, turning that whole paradigm, right, that paradigm. So we have to touch on race, right? We have to touch on racism. We have to touch on who's black, who's white, white race, black race, human race. We have to speak on these issues. We have to break it down. Because once you know the truth, you'll be free of the lies, right? So just because we're learning bits and pieces, like breadcrumbs of the truth, we have to put the picture together, right, to see the fullness of it. Right? And until we do, these people are still a part of that system, the Babylonian system, and that makes them our enemy. You have to understand most people are not ready. They're not ready to be unplugged. They're not ready to hear the truth and nothing but the truth. Right? So help them, God of truth, right? the power of truth. They are afraid. They are fighting against the power of truth. So you have to understand, most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them, here's the part that he said, he said many of them are so inert, so helplessly, Slika, Slachana, right? So hopelessly, they are so hopelessly deep pendant. We say, as Rasa Man, we say, they are deep endant, right? They are deep endant, not just they're not only dependent, brothers and sisters, right? They're not only dependent, but they are deep ending. They are in too deep, right? They are so hopelessly dependent, right, on the system, on the shitstem, the Babylonian matrix, that they will fight to protect it. They are fighting to protect it, right? And they oppose those of us of the truth, right? They oppose us, but they're not really opposing us. They are opposing themselves. We pray, right, that ha Allahayim, ha Elohim, Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem Yeshua will give them repentance, a change of mind, right? A change of mind, right? So they'll be able to acknowledge the truth and to deliver themselves, right? You know, to deliver themselves out of the sneer of Diablos, out of the sneer of the, the God of the world, flesh, and the devil shit stuff. This matrix, right? Were you looking to me, Neo? Or were you looking at the woman in the red dress? <laughs> so this was the scene right here, right, when they were in the construction. That's a scene that they was well, in, in the construction. Just say, heal up Sophia Stewart, right? Heal up Sophia Stewart, the real uh, mother, right? The mother of the Matrix, right? The mother of the Matrix. And what do you mean by the mother of the Matrix? Well, she's the one who really wrote the original story. If you don't know about Sophia Stewart, look up Sophia Stewart, 
and Matrix and go check her out. Check out her works. You know what I mean? And show the sister some love and, and, and you know, support what she's doing. You know what I mean? And support that effort of hers. You know what I mean? Just let others know the truth about that. It's just very important that actually a black woman, right, is the, well, in a sense, mother of the Matrix, you know, in more ways than one, right? Because a black woman is actually the mother of the Canaanites. And if you think about it, the white race as well. So just touching that scene right there, or that um, part of it right there was, was very important from the Matrix movie because um, often we've made, um, you know, we've alluded to it, but we, 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 we couldn't quote it exactly as it was in the movie, right? Where he said that many of them are so inert. That means there's no movement, right? They're stuck. They're like, they're like in a frozen, they're in a frozen psychological state, right? And many of I and I lost people, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, are those very people. They are inert. Inert means that there's no movement. They are so hopelessly dependent on the shit stuff. They are so hopelessly deep in the deep end, right? They're like in the deep end of the pool. And you already know that they say, especially like blacks in the West because of uh, white supremacy, racism, slavery, and also all the babies and people who were tortured in water, you know what I mean? That they can't, they have, some of them have problems with the water and swimming and afraid of water. Right? Should we say the black woman with the hair hats? You know, okay, we don't want to really go there right now. But remember, a black woman is the mother, right? You know, in fact, we can say to white folks that your mama, your original mama black, right? Your original mama black. So many of them are so inert, right? They're in a state of inertia, right? Frozen psychological state. So hopelessly dependent on the shit stuff, on the Babylonian system that they will fight, right, fight against the truth. They will oppose the truth in order to protect it, right, in order to protect it, right? We pray that Jah would give them repentance, a change of mind, so that they can acknowledge the truth. Oh, I mean, so, with that Morpheus uh, kind of speech out the way, let us return to this evidence here on the um, white Hamites, right, and the Canaanite origins of the so-called white race, right? So she goes on to say here, that we're going looking at the 2010 uh, backup copy uh, that we have from Phoenician Goddess uh, Channel. We don't even know if she's still out there, but probably after this video, we're going to go look and see what's up, right? But she says the Ashkenazi Jews and the Sephardic Jews Right, are the long lost descendants, she says, of the Canaanite, Phoenicians, Hittites, and Carthaginians. Well, we know this is true, especially with the Ashkenazi, since they have that Turkish link, and the Turks, right, come from the ancient Hittites, right, and only blood relatives of the Phoenician Lebanese. Now, she goes to this like Canaanite civilization, she says, she says, predates Noah and his three sons by 26. A uh, thousand years. Well, you know, there's a lot of, you know, like we said, we didn't agree with everything here. But we saw that much of her evidence, right, or at least the facts that she's putting forward, right, backs a lot of facts that we have studied and we have evidence to back up as well. So it was good to see this kind of overlap right here. But let's go down here. So we have the Abraham migration, mi migration to Canaan circa 1700 B.C., now, she says that biblical scholars place the date of Abraham's migration from Ur to Canaan or Canaan in the year 1700 B.C. Upon arrival in the land of Canaan, right, he settled in Hebron, a Canaanite city already inhabited by the old European Hittites, i.e. Canaan's indigenous people. Right? Abraham's descendants, she says the Arabs, and the Hebrews, she says, were not existed in 1700 B.C. Well, we don't agree with you there either, right? So you have to really recognize how we have to go through a lot of this information right here. And we can give you the reasons why. We'd like to see what reasons that, you know, what, what, what evidence that she brings forward, right? Now, she goes into Baalbek Temple, right, that was in Lebanon, was built before, you know, 12,000 for the 
for the god or for their god Baal, right? And it is the oldest, uh, she says, Masonic temple complex in the world, right? Then she goes through this uh, watch favorite, I think 530 videos she had reference here of um, the famous singers of Lebanon, Turkey, Egypt, Tunisia. The, she says the real, quote, Arabs, the Ishmaelites, she says the Saudi Arabians. Well, the real Arabs who are from Ishmael, from Abraham, are the black Arabs. You can find them in Sudan. You can find them in Somalia as well and in a couple of other regions as well. Right, the Lebanese uh, Dabka people. She called these like okay, the ancient folk dance for, of the Canaanites, um, MTV Lebanon, and so forth and so on. Right, so um, she says that her channel promotes right the United States. Now this is very important. I want you to pay attention to this. Remember that the Canaanite, the origin of the Anglo Amorite. I think it's interesting that she does not have an identification of who are the Amorites, since that's very important for us, right, as the black and the brown sheep of the house of Israel. When we look at Genesis 15, it says the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full, right? So a lot of her information is very, very close, but it falls short, right? But compared to a lot of the other pseudo scholars out there, even many of our fellow Hebrew Israelites and, and the whole tap the whole tap folks, whole tappers, you know. Um, they're really off on this. Many are really off on this. And it's interesting that really very few really know anything really true about the Canaanites. I mean, they were a great people even then. It's very clear from the whole biblical narrative. So who are they today? Right? So the Canaanite Phoenician New World Order, that's what she promotes. Right? And um, this is a lot of what we have in the symbols on the dollar bill. Right? The phoenix. So you call it the eagle. Right, the, the pyramid, the enslavement of the black and the brown sheep of the house of Israel. In other words, doing to us right, what they say and what, no doubt, we did to them. In fact, this book right here, we have to segue right here. Because her narrative matches the narrative that we have here in um, William Hamilton Stewart um, in this particular study scroll that the Lion of Judah Press you know, created, you know, basically redacted and put together here as a point of reference. It's called Aryan Origins and Kingship. We're seeking to do a volume two where we will include a little bit more information, maybe even some of this information, just as a point of reference, right? You know, because this is a college, right? You know, this is a college, this is a yeshiva, right? We have to study, right? In order to fulfill John's word and command, we have to study to shoot ourselves approved to Ha Elohim Hashem standard. Now, the Phoenicians, she goes on, the world's first millionaires, the Phoenicians, and they were the ones who, uh, it's interesting that her site has the purple. You know, we've been talking about those purple Israelites, right? They don't really know what they're getting into. You know, they're going off because even that whole use of the color purple really is more attached to, of course, Babylon. And the Phoenicians were merchants in the purple as well. This is where we get this whole type when they put the purple on the Moshiach, our black Lord and Savior. When the Romans, right, who are part Edomite, part Canaanite people. Because remember, Edom and the, and the Canaanites, they were in bed together. I mean, literally. And they had seed as well. We have Amalek coming out from that as well, right? The Canaanites, the origin of the white race. I think this is her, I mean, this is the real big point right here, right? This is the significant point right here, right? The Canaanites, the origin of the so-called white race, i.e. the original so-called Europeans who named continent Europe after Princess Europa, daughter of King um, Agenor of Tyre, Lebanon. Remember how in um, the prophet, Right, the prophet mentions uh, the prince of Tyre in the Bible, and in that denunciation of the prince of Tyre, we see the prophet speaking prophetically to Satan, right, the god of the world, and it was in Isaiah, Isaiah 23 and 8. It says, um, Who have taken this counsel against Tyre, the crowning city? whose merchants are princes, 
whose traffickers are the honorable of the earth. So who's the honorable of the earth in this time? Right? Is it the original root race people or is it the Canaanites? You know what I'm saying? So we have to see how all this really connects in the bigger picture. But if you don't know who's who, then you're seeing names and people in the Bible, but you don't really know the real significance of these names or of these uh, people. I think in, it's in Ezekiel that we have the prince of Tyrus. So instead of Tyra, it's Tyrus. Right? And if you go to Ezekiel, let's go to Ezekiel right here. Ezekiel um, 27. Right? We're looking at Ezekiel 27. And it says, Now thou son of man, take up a lamentation for Tyrus, speaking of Tyre, right? And say to Tyrus, O thou that art situate at the entry of the sea. Right? So that also explains why certain people have a a um, kind of a fetish for the sea, for the water, for boating, being close. You see how white people build their houses right there, like on the edge of the cliff or right by the water. And then a storm come and wash it away. And people be like, why are you building it? And they'd be like, we got to do this. It comes from their roots. You know, you got to know who they are. And many of them have to know who they are too. And say to Tyrus, O thou that art situate at the entry of the sea, which art a merchant of the people for many isles. So we see that involvement in merchant and merchandise. I mean, what does Babylon do? According to the prophets in Revelation, right? Babylon is a trafficker. I mean, a trafficker, not just of, 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 of goods and services, so to speak, and commodities and other items, but also of the lost sheep of the house of Israel, right? The black and the brown sheep of the house of Israel, right? As well as the souls. Get this? You have to look at Revelation, right? Babylon. The souls of people, Right? And the enslavement of humanity, and it's not just black folks, right? But they white folks have enslaved white folks before they had enslaved black folks. I mean, let's just recognize that right there. But then, of course, they say slavery is an old thing, but we're talking about prophecy right now. Which are the merchant of the people for many isles. Thus saith Adonai Yahweh, Adonai Jah, Rastafari, O Tyrus, thou hast said, I am of perfect beauty. <laughs> right? I am of perfect beauty. Right? And we go on right here. We're in Ezekiel chapter 27. Right? So we see this um we see this judgment, right? We see this judgment right within the scriptures. Right? But then there's the bigger part right here, right? When we look in the next chapter, chapter 28. Ezekiel 28 and 2. Son of man, my right? son of Adam, say to the prince of Tyrus, right? Say to the prince of Tyrus, thus saith Adonai Yahweh, right? Thus saith Adonai Jah, Rastafari, because thine heart is lifted up and thou hast said, I am a God, all right? Yes, they worship Baal and Baal, so forth and so on. But they, they, those are no gods. Those are idols. Those are the, the, their own constructions. You know what I mean? But they say, the prince of Tyre said that he was a god. Right? You know, because the, what, who, who is the god? Let's ask the question right here. Who is the god of white supremacy? Right? Who is the white man's god? The white man is his own god. This is why he has exalted himself against every god. This is why they had whitewashed the image and placed Caesar Bogiers there, right? So this is the connection, right, with this prophetic word that we have in Ezekiel. And this is a very important symbol for them, right? You already saw over here on this page right here how the channel Phoenician Goddess, right, promotes the United States as a Canaanite empire. This is exactly what the scripture says, right? The Amorites, the Amorites, Amorica, right? The Amorites, the vultures, right? The Canaanite Phoenician New World Order. You, you see right here, the New World Order. Look, 
Canaan was the world's first trading empire. You see what I'm saying? So you see how this matches the scripture? Money. This whole money system that has caught up the world. A Canaanite invention. Now they say the alphabet Phoenician invention, but actually the Ethiopians were before you. You all know that, right? And the original Phoenicians, well, we already explained how out of the Black Sea do we get the albino sea. And we there's three major types of albino. There is the so-called African albino. That even though the skin is, you know, even though there's no visible, you know, um, melanin, as it were, you can see the features are very much, um, as you would say, black, right? And even the hair type. But then they, they also have the, the albino, which is the Asian type. And then there's also the European, the blonde hair, blue eyed albino that Adolf Hitler and the Nazis would have wet dreams for. And these are still born to African, black African, um, West Africans. I mean, there's been a lot of it. And if you go out there, there's a lot of pictures and even some recent ones, too, where two, a black man and a black woman give birth to a blonde hair, blue eyed. I mean, you look at the child, you see even the features is like, wow. You know, what I mean, this is a European. This is how it began. This is what the Bible is talking about right here. This is the evidence. Right? This is the real world science or knowledge. Not all that BS that they give you in the whorehouses that they want to call churches. Right? So here we have the Prince of Tyrus, right? And the Son of Man is to speak to the Prince of Tyrus and say, Thus saith Adonai Yahweh. Right? Thus saith Adonai Jah Rastafari. Because thine heart is lifted up. And thou hast said, Ani, right, right, Elohim, I sit in the seat of God. I'm Caesar Bogiers. I mean, look around. They whitewash all the pictures, even have, have the careless Ethiopians believing it to this day. That's why they'll be slain by Yahweh's sword, by John's sword, by the word of truth as well. So I sit in the seat of God, the Prince of Tyre said. In the midst of the seas, at that point of doing the best traffic and business, like the British Empire, that's part of that Anglo-American and Amorite. They are linked with the Amorite. Yet, thou art a man, right? Yet, you're just a white man. You know what I mean? Come on now. And not God. You are not Elohim, right? Though thou set thine heart, their feeling, their emotion, their sentiment. This is why a lot of folks get upset. Right when we talk about oh, our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we start to show the ancient iconographic, just the facts, just the facts, man, just the facts. I say, oh, why you have to make it about race? And then you see the hypocrisy. They'll they'll keep promoting the Caesar Borgia's image, right? Because they set their heart, right, as the heart, right, as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret they can hide from thee. Many of them know who they are. Right? And, 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 and we'll find this more and more. But a lot of y'all will dismiss it because it doesn't fit into that paradigm which others of them who were sent to lie to us have told us, you know, about Ham was the black one and, and Shem was like the olive complexion and they make you think that olives are only green but olives are black too right and that you know Japheth you know was a white man you know but it says it's all confused you know what they have given you you know what I mean but you know they were wiser than Daniel there was no secret they can hide from thee you know what I mean they know who they are with thy wisdom and with thy understanding thou hast gotten thee riches I mean, how do you think, right, the so-called white people, right, the Canaanites being the last to come up in this world rulership as they have in the latter days, the times of the Gentiles, exactly what the prophets have said, right, is exactly what has happened, right, their wisdom, right, their understanding from that they have gotten themselves riches, they have gotten silver gold and silver into their treasure. Yeah, you can talk about they kill people, they but they got it. If we were, right, if we were these gods as black people, then how did we come to this position? 
That's the question we got to ask, and we have to ask it honestly and get off of all of this um, intellectual simping, right? And, you know, we look at the facts for the facts, right? And it says, by thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches. By traffic, right? And this is the traffic here. If you look in Ezekiel 28, it's uh, T-R-A-F-F-I-C-K. All right, so there was two traffic movies. Some of y'all saw the one with, um, who was it, Don Cheadle? The, uh, I think he was the American one. You really have to see the, the English one. The English one is the real one. That's the one with traffic with the K, right? As it says right here in Ezekiel 28 and 5. Because how do you think, you know, the sun never set, right, on the British Empire and how they ruled the world, how they controlled the seas? Yeah, the Moors... And the Ethiopians right, were ruling the seas for thousands of years before. But how all of a sudden they come in and they rule it alone, right? And, and, and almost were able to um, um, control, right, and enslave and colonize with only a very few exceptions like Imperial Ethiopia, you know, the entire world. How was that? So you have to ask these things. Well, Ezekiel gives us answers. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches. And thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. You know, this, this is, when we talk about white supremacy, racism is a system. Well, this was Ezekiel's way of giving us a heads up in Ezekiel chapter 28. Right? Therefore, now because of that, that's the situation we're in, right? Okay. Ergo, Silazi, therefore, thus indeed saith Adonai Cha Rastafari, saith the the sovereign, the, the sovereign he who be who he be, is thy vine magic, Edamawi Halaslazi, Father, Strength and Redeemer, because thou has set thine heart as the heart of Elohim, as the heart of the power. Behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon thee. Have you noticed the big complaint of the Europeans, the Canaanites are? That these immigrants in Europe are coming from Africa, so-called, the Middle East, so-called, right? And even Asia, right? It's interesting because Asia is still kind of called what it was called even in ancient time, even the far, far east or Sinim. Right, which is like to say China or Shini, you guys see no, they've been taken over. Look at America, America, Trump, this whole 2016 election. It's, what does it hinge on? These immigrants, what are the so called white race, right? Or you can say the white races if you want to. You know, they just recognize who they are, you know. And when we say we're not racist, you, you got you to gotta put race first, you got to recognize who you are. You can say that because you don't know who you are. It's 